Hi everyone, this is Britt Simon. Um, I want to address a subject which is going to be important for some of you in DV 2021 uh, and also DV 2022. Um, currently, I'm recording this in early June. Um, and uh, as of early June, this is going to be the position, but this, this particular video will become stale in time. Uh, meaning that this, my perspective on this is, is going to change, I expect it to change, right? Um, and the subject I want to talk about is for those of you that applied for the DV lottery in either 2021, uh, for the DV 2021 program or DV 2022, and you did not use a valid passport at the time. Um, which uh, the instructions from the, the, the DV Lottery website uh, are pretty clear about uh, that you should be disqualified, right? And so I want to talk about that and talk about whether you will be disqualified or not. Um, and the reason for me thinking about this was I just answered a question in a, you know, for someone um, uh, making clear that right now there is a lack of clarity around about the answer, which um, I expect to get clear up, cleared up in time, but, um, but we need to be clear that at the moment, I can't say to you with 100% certain you will be disqualified if you chose some sort of, um, uh, if you chose to say you were exempt for whatever reason. So, um, so let me explain uh, a little bit better about what I mean. And if this applies to you, I suggest you go and get a cup of coffee or something, sit down and listen to this. If this doesn't apply to you, if you uh, didn't uh, apply for the DV lottery entry without using a valid passport, then you can skip this video. There'll be nothing else um, of interest for you on this particular video. Okay, so let me just, uh, let me go over the instructions and go over the evidence and then talk about why I'm not prepared to, uh, to say that you will be, um, that you will be disqualified. So in the DV lottery instructions, when you entered the program, either for DV 2021 or 2022, um, you, uh, it, you were supposed to have a valid unexpired passport. That passport could have expired a day after your entry. It doesn't matter as long as it was unexpired on the day of your entry um, and you use that passport to enter, uh, then that's okay. That's the only requirement that you were that you had to um, pay attention to for the passport, right? Now, um, uh, please understand, and I've had questions about this, if your passport expired a month later, a day later, a year later, or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you, uh, you know, if that was a valid passport at the time. If you had multiple passports because you were dual citizenship or something like that, and you used a passport that was valid, but you apply under a different passport, that okay, that's okay as well. They're, they were simply looking for a valid unexpired passport as of the day of the entry. And the passports that we're talking about are full passports, not the um, the sort of West African. Um, there, there, there are some passports that are being issued in West Africa that allow travel within a few countries in that region. Um, uh, that is not a valid passport from the point of view of the DV lottery uh, program. So, you know, uh, that would also be an invalid entry, theoretically, right? Now, um, the, uh, the rules and the guidance that is given to consular officers was recently updated to explain to them um, how they should assess whether somebody was um, eligible to claim some sort of exemption or not. I just want to read a couple of, um, a couple of things from that, uh, from that guidance to make it very clear, right? Now, many people say, well, uh, it was during COVID times and uh, and I was very busy or the government in my country took three months to uh, to issue a passport and I couldn't get it in time or it was expensive. I couldn't get it, you know, I couldn't afford it at the time. Those, those, ex those reasons are not valid reasons. Uh, they're not valid excuses for not having complied with this uh, requirement. Um, so, for it says, uh, so, for example, the, the guidance says a delay in obtaining a passport 
whether or not the delay was within the applicant's control is not a basis to qualify for an exemption. If an applicant indicates that he or she does not have a passport due to a delay in issuance, the applicant does not qualify for the exemption. So in other words, if you didn't have a passport at that time and you ticked the box to say you were from a communist country or whatever exemption you, you, uh, you, you tick that box, but later were able to get a passport because uh, it was simply a question of being delayed, then you don't qualify for an, ex for an exemption. Um, the three valid exemption, uh, exemptions are these. Individuals who are stateless, and I'll come back to that. Nationals of a communist-controlled country who are unable to obtain a passport from the government or the co communist-controlled country. And beneficiaries of individual waivers approved by the Secretary of Homeland Security and the Secretary of State, uh, pursuant to CFR, blah, 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 right? Uh, all three exemptions apply only to individuals who are unable to apply for a passport. Okay. It then goes on and, and it explains to the CO, uh, the consular officers, how to assess uh, statelessness, for example, how to assess, um, you know, which uh, countries are considered communist con controlled countries. And those two, um, uh, those two, particular things are, you know, kind of, uh, they're, they're clear, but they're complex. I don't really want to go into now. The one area that um, I think might be interesting to some of you is um, is in the third, uh, the third scenario where it says um, uh, the requirement may be waived by the Secretary of Homeland Security and the Secretary of State, blah, blah, blah. And it talks about evidence that the applicant has been granted refugee status in a country other than his or her country of nationality, on the basis of persecution by the government uh, of his or her country of nationality, indicating that the applicant is unable to obtain a passport from that government without experiencing further harm. So if you're a, if you're a refugee in a third country and you've had your refugee accept, uh, status accepted in that country, and you can prove that, and you can prove that that was your position when you entered the, uh, the lottery, if you can then say, and it's got to, be, it can't just be made up. You, you know, this has to be a real thing. If you can then say, well, I couldn't apply to a passport from my original country because I was a refugee from that country, and actually the government would cause me harm if I told them where I live now, right? That would be um, an excuse which could be at least assessed by the uh, by the CEO. Uh, and it actually states that the CO would have to get um, uh, an opinion on this from the visa office, uh, CBP liaison, uh, before issuing the visa. In other words, there will be some period of administrative processing after your interview um, uh, while they check whether or not they're going to give you a waiver or not, right? So those, those things are in place. Now, this is pretty clear. You should not have applied for uh, your entry into the lottery unless you had a valid passport or unless you were sure that you, um, uh, that you qualified for one of these exemptions. However, many of you have done that, and so I'm trying to address um, you know, uh, the position for those people. And I want to explain um, an aspect of this that, that, uh, that is time specific. Right now, in early June, um, we have not seen the volume of, uh, you know, we, we've not seen a high volume of interviews carried out so far for DV 2021. And DV 2021 was the first year in which this new uh, policy was in place, right? So, um, so what that means is we haven't seen people go through the system in any volume of numbers to be able to predict accurately uh, whether the, the COs will automatically refuse cases like this or whether they'll try and look for um, you know, some sort of way to approve cases like this or use some sort of personal discretion that's available to them. Um, the rules and the guidance to the COs reads pretty firmly. I have to say, it reads pretty firmly. But um, there, there have been times before when the government give instructions in the DV lottery and then act a different way. Um, and I'll give you an example of that. 
um, a few years ago, and I think it was in the 2017 or 2018 uh, lotteries, uh, a new rule was implemented where if you used a photo that had been used in a previous DV lottery entry, that you would be disqualified, right? And the, the instructions, if you check the instructions today in DV 2021 or DV 2022, the instructions do make it very clear that you will become, or you will be in, ineligible for the DV lottery if you used a photo uh, from a previous lottery, right? However, since that rule was implemented a few years ago, I've yet to see even one case that has been refused on that basis. And I have, have on the other hand, seen many cases where people have told me that they did exactly what they weren't supposed to do, and they were approved for their visas anyway. And so I can't be certain at this point in time, this specific point in time, I can't be certain that, uh, that applying for DV entry uh, will result in um, uh, in disqualification. I've talked about this before. It's still the case in June of 2021 because of the low volume um, of, of interviews that we've had. I do know that um, some cases have had delays in getting uh, their documentarily qualifi qualified status, their ready for scheduling status, because KCC have um, asked for evidence of why the person was, uh, you know, why the person claimed some sort of exemption uh, on the passport requirement at the time of entry. And so KCC won't disqualify a case, but they will ask you for evidence. And if you provide that evidence, that evidence is then going to, well, I mean, you have to provide the evidence because KCC would not disqualify you any, uh, it would not uh, uh, schedule you and they wouldn't disqualify you, so you'd be stuck in limbo. So um, uh, once you provide whatever evidence, a statement or evidence or whatever else you want to say was your reason for uh, for not having the, the passport, once you provide that, that's gonna be sent to the consular officer and will be used in your case to make a determination whether you were justified in not using your passport or not. Um, and, and as I say, only the consular officer will uh, be in a position to disqualify you if he or she decides that you were not eligible to claim an exemption. So, um, so it's a little unclear at the moment. Um, it's going to take a volume of interviews uh, with people who have pushed that process to the, to you know, to the degree necessary, who have who have fought with KCC to get their uh, to get their visa interview scheduled. And who have, you know, who haven't followed the rules in the original DV entry, it's going to take uh, quite a few uh, interviews for that to happen. We may see that volume of interviews from DV 2021. We may not. Um, at this point, as we all know, DV 2021 has got a very low, low volume of interviews anyway, and of those of that very low interview uh, volume. Um, few of the cases, if any, that I know of are actually in the position where they have been scheduled for interview, but they originally didn't follow the passport requirement. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens. And and you can, um, if, if you're a DV 2021, then you're already in this mess. You're already, uh, you know, you're already trying to proceed down the path. And frankly, you're probably battling for an interview anyway. Um, but for those people in DV 2021 that didn't uh, have a passport at the time of their entry, disqualification is a possibility, but it's not a certainty as far as I'm concerned at this point because of the lack of uh, the lack of you know history um, on many cases. If you're a DV 2022 applicant and you're listening to this, then a smart decision, a smart way forward for your particular case would be to delay entry um, uh, or submission of your DS-260, um, delay your case until others have gone through that process. And over the, over the next few months, I expect some people to come back to my blog and to me and say, I went through an interview and that rotten CO disqualified me um, and you know because of, I didn't have a passport when I entered, or they'll come back and say, I didn't have a passport when I entered, and the CEO let, let it go and approved me anyway. 
Now, if I get one person who says either one of those things, I ignore it. It's not, it's not, um, it's not uh, enough of volume for me to trust the, the, you know, what I'm being told. If I get many people who tell me one or other of the of those two positions, then I will begin to trust that. And I, I imagine we're going to see some sort of, um, some sort of, you know, there'll be some cases that will just be disqualified. There'll be other cases, uh, you know, which will be approved. There, there may not be a completely black and white situation. It may not be that there is an obvious approval situation or an obvious denial situation. Um, and going back to the example I gave about the photos, that is an obvious approval situation right now. They have never implemented uh, the refusals for that, even though the instructions to date are still absolutely clear and sound completely firm that you will be disqualified. Um, they've not implemented that. And so until that changes, and it could change at any time, they could suddenly say, we're going to implement that rule and actually enforce refusals from DB 2022. But until that changes, the position is that on photos, if you reused a photo from a previous entry, I believe you will be able to get your, um, your visa. It won't be a problem. I'm not suggesting you do that. That's a stupid thing to do, frankly. Follow the bloody instructions would be my advice. But if you have done that, um, then right now I certainly would, would say, you know, that's not going to lead to disqualification. Similarly, for the passport um, uh, exception, um, it was a stupid thing to do. You shouldn't have done it. Um, but for many of you, you probably decided you have no choice. And so you entered anyway. Um, now you're in a risky situation. We don't know which way that situation is going to work out. You're going to have to wait and see. And if I were in your position, I wouldn't be because I followed the instructions. But if I were in your position, um, I would wait and let others go ahead before I commit my money and my uh, mental health and my time, etc., to pursuing the DV lottery entry without knowing what the outcome would be. So that's your choice. Um, you can choose to be a trailblazer and try and get that, or you can choose to sit back and wait until other people have gone through. That's your choice. Um, of course, don't wait too long because, as we know, you know, DV 2022 is going to be tough um, because in the same way that DV 2021 was tough for all the COVID closures and, and you know, all of the, the stuff that has gone on. Okay, so I'm hoping that's clear. Um, I'm hoping that's helpful to you. I'm hoping a few of you will watch this and at least understand why I'm answering the questions about that in the way that I do. Um, and uh, and then if that changes at some point, I will either produce another video or a blog article where I will talk about that in, in detail and confirm one of the three positions that it's either uh, going to result in categorically going to result in refusal or it's categorically not going to be a refusal or it's something in the middle where some cases are being refused, some cases are being approved and um, and we'll try and develop a strategy about how you can be in the middle or how you can be on the better side of that middle position if that happens. Um, you know, I, I, I always recommend people, first and foremost, follow the bloody rules. Um, but if you haven't followed the rules, you're not a horrible person. I still want to support you. Um, you know, it's just that it's so much easier if you just follow the bloody rules, really. It really is in this process. Um, but there you go. All right. Um, if you uh, if you can give me a thumbs up on this video, it won't be a high volume video, um, and uh, you know get, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you're a DB 2022, you're going to need some help over the next few months. I've got a backlog of uh, you know sorry a backlog. I've got a catalog back catalog of videos and articles on my blog, which will be very helpful for you. And I'm going to try and ignore, uh, I'm going to try and organize those over the next um, uh, few days and weeks um, so that you can go through some of those videos. And I'll be re-recording some of those videos as well um, so that you can get good information. So please do make sure you're subscribed. Um, uh, you're better off getting good information than bad information, frankly. Um, so, uh, you know, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. All right. Thanks then. Bye-bye now.